Hi, I'm Tracy Brooks. I'm patient care coordinator here at the veranda. We want to welcome you to the veranda today. I would like to use a traffic light as um, a description on what to do with this, with cardiovascular disease. We're going to talk about yellow being the warning signs, or not really the warning signs, but the risk factors. What we are, that's a big buzzword today in healthcare because it is so important. You are, you have certain risk factors that will put you in a category that you're going to be more susceptible to have heart disease. Number one, do you have a family history of heart disease? If you have that in your family, which a lot of us have that in our family background, then you're going to have, that's a risk factor for having cardiovascular disease. Number two, are you a smoker? That is something that we, I know that we harp and harp on smoking cessation. That is something that we have got to focus on and people have got to pay attention to. Smoking does a lot of damage. The nicotine constricts the blood vessels um, going into the heart or in the heart. So we've got to pay attention to that. Um, the blood pressure, high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, that is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. If you have a high cholesterol, now really let's talk about this. If you don't know what your blood pressure readings are, if you say you're young and you don't know what your blood pressure readings are, you don't know what your cholesterol is, it's never too early to start and ask your physician at your checkup, hey, I would like to find out what is my cholesterol and what is my blood pressure readings. Um, obesity, that's something that plays a huge factor. Um, because if you are obese, then it just kind of increases the problems with everything else that you have going on. We also see diabetes playing a big uh, role in hypertensive cardiovascular disease. If a patient is diabetic, they're more susceptible or prone to have cardiovascular problems. If you're physically inactive, um, just walking 30 minutes a day, five days a week can make a difference. And I'm preaching to the choir because I do not at this moment do that myself. I have a treadmill that I was faithfully on for one year and I haven't touched it since. I don't know what the problem is, but I do know that I have to get back on that because I felt so much better when I was doing that. Um, stress. Stress is a big portion of cardiovascular disease. We have got to learn ways to um, rid ourselves of stress. Yoga, um, meditation, that find things that you enjoy doing. For me, uh, personally, it's gardening. I absolutely lose track of all time when I get out of my garden. So stress goes away. Um, those are so important. Find the thing that kind of helps you de-stress and do that. Add that to your daily or your weekly routine. Um, then there's some other um, things that are definites with uh, hypertensive cardiovascular disease. Um, if you do have blood pressure issues, make sure that you're monitoring your blood pressure. Um, that means that you have a cuff at home and you are checking it on the regular basis. If you don't have a cuff at home and you don't have access to that, you can set up a blood pressure check appointment at your doctor's office and just come by to get your blood pressure checked. They will be glad to do that. Um, communicate with your uh, provider or your medical staff. That is so important to build that rapport and that relationship with your medical staff so that they will know that you are not, when you call, you're not crying wolf, that there is something wrong with you. If you have that relationship with them, they're going to know that, the people that talk to you on the phone. And if you talk to someone that's not clinical, they know when to get a message to the clinical staff and have them call you back. Um, Make sure, like I said earlier, about the, med the side effects of medication. If you take one and you feel like you you've got negative side effects, there's so many out there to try. Don't sit and say, oh, well, I can't take the medicine, I'm just going to not take the medicine. You definitely want to take the medication. You do not ever want to just pull yourself off of hypertension medication. You want to call your doctor or your clinical provider, speak to them about that before you make that decision. It has to start small. You know, this job has been so exciting for me just to learn these things and to say, you know, I may not can change the world, but I can change myself. I am in control of myself. So if I can make myself get back on that treadmill, yay. <laughs>